we're gonna bring you and show you some secret mines. They're literally mine shafts on our property we've never showed you, and we're gonna show you in today's video, so stick around for that. I remember distinctly, I took this kid hiking once. This was a kid who'd spent very little time in the woods and we were just going off trail, cross country. We came to a very thick section of brush. He didn't know what to do. He literally stopped and looked ahead at the brush and he stopped, he was frozen. He didn't know what to do. He didn't have the basic skill of either navigating around the brush or getting down on his hands and knees and crawling through it. Today we're going on the ultimate survival hike. Now this is the ultimate survival hike for realists and for normal people. This isn't some crazy adventure. This is us going into woods with a bunch of kids of varying ages, testing their limits, learning some skills, and coming out better for it in the end. Okay, big man, you ready? Let's head up a mountain. I have some goals on this trip. Some of my goals are to push the kids' boundaries, to learn some skills, um, to build a fire in the woods, but we are going to be guided by opportunity today. So we have some basic equipment, including a little rimfire rifle. If we have the opportunity, we'll take a squirrel it's squirrel season and we will cook it over the fire in that case. So we'll kind of see what we, what we run into on this trip, um, no matter what we're gonna have an adventure though. Okay, so we met at the bluebird tree. Why is this called the bluebird tree? Gracie wants to hang a bunch of birdhouses there. And also the reason that we named it is because it's like out in the old fence and there are no trees around it. Yeah, so the unique tree, it's a beautiful spreading beach and it's in the middle of a bunch of White pine. Okay, tell me what you got there, dude. A pig skull. A pig skull? Yeah, that's why this is a big of pig doof. A big doof. Now, where did that pig skull come from? Oh, look, a pig doof. Uh, one of our pigs. One of our pigs. Now, how did it get up here? Coyotes got it. I didn't throw it up here. No. Coyotes brought it up here. Coyotes brought it up here. I put it at the back of the homestead. The coyotes dragged it up here and cleaned it. Why? That's pretty cool. Why did they kill it? They didn't kill it. I killed it. You can see the shot right here. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I thought 22. I thought this, no, that's a tooth bit. Right. No, it's not. It's a um, gun. It's a bullet. Okay, guys, listen. As we're hiking, mm -hmm. don't be crazy loud. The next thing we're going to do, the next challenge, is to navigate across this hillside, kind of on the contour lines, listen and watch for squirrels. If we see a squirrel, we'll get it and we'll cook it on a fire. Should we go through the dark forest? We should go through the dark forest and then we should go to the mines next. So yep, let's check them the out. Yes, forest. that's exactly what I was going to say. That's in the dark forest. We're going to bring you and show you some secret mines. They're literally mine shafts on our property we've never showed you and we're going to show you in today's video. So stick around for that. They're pretty incredible and they're in, they're also Let incredibly hidden hand. okay so i have a challenge for you can you guys go ahead of me and find the mines yes can yeah. you do that they're really hard to find so even let me tell you this we lived here for i think three years before we found these mines and we'd hiked all over all the mountains we'd walked right past them they have hidden entrances you'll see why they're hidden and then we'll tell you what the mines were made for and show you how deep they are. It's actually a really crazy, incredible thing which we've never shown on the channel and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. All right guys, can you guys find the mines? I've given them about a five minute head start and now I'm gonna slowly trail up and see if they can find these mines on their own. Here's some, I think that's deer. Hi, that might be Cody. Yes, sir. What did you say? All right, here's part of the challenge for me. Is it eating dough and dough this way? 
is carrying a 40 plus pound kid walking on all these slippery leaves. Like I said, we've got different age ranges out here. When you got a three year old, you can't expect him to keep up. With an eight year old or a nine or a 10 year old. So this is the challenge for me, is hiking up through these, on these steep hills and not falling on my butt. You never will fall on your butt. I don't fall very often, but sometimes you can't avoid it. Yeah, sometimes you can't heal the jam. All right, here's a great deer trail. We're gonna walk on this trail. This will help us a lot. Here's a nice heavy deer trail. I don't know if you can see it on camera. It runs right here. It runs out that way. And it runs out this way. And we'll just jump on it. It follows the contour. Okay, here's the first mine. Now this mine is a spot where they dug out of the hillside. It's a big pit. But this mine is nothing compared to what we're about to show you. For the first few years we lived here, we thought there were only open pit mines. And then, my sister was hiking with the kids and they found multiple shaft mines. But, they're totally hidden. Okay, is that, did you find it? Okay, great job. These are rhododendron thickets, this tree right here. And the trees we're surrounded with are rhododendrons. I'm brushing the trees. They generally grow on the north side of the hills. They're a, they're a, um, evergreen. And um, they're hard to navigate. They're just thick, thick thickets. Usually they grow in steep, steep areas. So that's what a rhododendron thicket looks like. All right, show me the mine and show me how it's hidden and how we didn't find it for a couple years. Here's the entrance. All right, you see why we didn't find it? Because the entrance is full of organic matter and leaves and dirt that's fallen down. So dig some leaves out of there so you're not so tight as you go through. Okay, climb off, buddy. Maybe a fox with in. With yeah. Rifle in my pack. We'll get out a flashlight. Who is here the day that we found these mines? I was. Uh, Tell me about it. How many times have you been inside? Three times. Three times? Okay. Here we go. Feet first. Have you ever been in there? Mm -hmm. I don't think you've ever been in. Are you going to go head first or feet first? I'm going to get some. Now you don't. You don't. Are you going to follow me in? Take off your backpack so you don't have any problem fitting in. You just, if you were here, the size of these entrances is incredibly small. It's kind of intimidating to squeeze into them, but there's a big surprise on the inside. All right, are you going down? Yeah. See ya. I was so tickled when we found these things. It's just like a dream come true to have something crazy like this on the property. This place where people worked so, so hard to try to make a living off the land years ago, probably 80 years ago. The walls of these mines are really stable. You know, the first time I went in, I was like, is this safe? But then I thought about it, and these are basically a soft stone. They're very deep. The shafts are basically horizontal and run into an extremely steep hill. It's almost a 45 degree slope. It's at least between 30 and 45 degrees. The shafts go in straight, go deep into the hill. So by the time you're in the back, you're under about 40 to 50 feet of soil and the walls are actually made out of a very it's a soft rock but it's a very stable rock there's not chunks that fall off i'll show you what i'm talking about are you ready to go in it's kind of crazy uh we're gonna go in head first and just slide down into this mine all right guys i'm coming in are you ready here we go 
go. Why don't touch the roof? Because there are bugs all over it. Because the deal's stopped. There's cave crickets. Well, yeah, and, and Granddaddy Vong legs. Okay, we just came into the warm air, so my lens is fogging up. We just came into the relatively warm air Ooh. of this space. It's about it's about 55 what? degrees in here. The spider just fogged. All right. <laughs> Guys, go to the back and show me how far back it goes. Cave crickets. I don't want to. They're on top of my head. The crickets fogging up. Get them really. flowing on. Me. All right, let's see the cave crickets and oh, there you are. Shine them back there. Yeah, Daddy Grand Long, Daddy back there. Long Legs, and cave crickets all over the. Shine back there, Dad. Back there. I will. The ceiling. Look at these. You can see the walls are made out of this. It's a soft stone. I don't know what it, the name of it is. So I'm crawling, crawling, still moving. Oh, I don't want spiders all. Over I'm coming in. Watch out, water! I want to come through. They're not. All right, here we go. Look at all these cave crickets up here. I, okay. Oh, cave crickets on my butt. Ah, ah, ah. So crazy, okay, so many. Bad. Just it's thousands so of them in here. Could it bite my bottom? No, just... So here we are. We're in basic. It's uh, we went from about 40 degrees, th upper 30s, and down into 50 something ah, degrees. Don't touch me. So my lens keeps fogging up. But here we are. We're in the back. Look at the back. There's, There's a bat? Right there. Oh, There's a bat. Shh, don't move. Sit down so we don't hit it. Oh my goodness. Bats. Oh, guys, I hope we don't hurt them. Look at this. Oh, there's two bats. Bat! Don't move. We don't want to scare them. Look how cute those cave bats are. Oh my goodness, they're Baby so cute. Bats. Look at these bats, guys. Oh, it's a mama bat. Look at them. them. I wish you could hold them. Do you wish you could hold them? Yeah. There's two bats, and they're just side by side. I guess they're sleeping. Gosh, my lens is so fogged up. And there's actually, you can see moisture on their, the hairs on their body. Look at those little bats. They're probably yeah. cave crickets. Delicious yeah. meal. They're probably like, what are these people doing in here? See if there's any more. Good eye, whoever saw those bats. Who saw them? Good job. Look around and see if you can find any more bats in here. Some people think bats are creepy, but they're adorable. I think they're adorable. I know. Um, I think fruit, ba fruit bats are like the biggest bats ever. They're like a foot big. That is so, so yeah. cool, guys. See those guys. bats and then do a bat. So cool. I think those are mama bats, buddy. Yeah. Big Look big at them. They're so cute. What kind of bats do you think they are? They probably eat bugs. We're going to have to research yeah, what do. kind of bats they are. They're so well, pretty yeah, and cute. Bat. Main diet, probably. I love to be bats. It's such bats. a such a ah! neat thing to see them up close. I saw one of them you. Move. you saw one of them move? Mm -hmm. Oh, ah. I saw it move too. <laughs> He's like, go away, go away. He's Should probably like, leave me alone, leave me alone. I'm trying to sleep. Come on, guys. <laughs> he, he said he's trying to push you away. All right. So right now we are under about 30 feet of soil, maybe 20. This is so dangerous. We're all gonna. Oh, it is not. I don't think it's dangerous. I've thought about it a lot, and these have been stable for 80 years. They've not moved. They've not collapsed. Now, who knows what they were looking for in these caves? In mica. Mi mica. 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 Get off my foot. Why were they looking for mica? For windows. Oh, look at this. Well, there's all kinds of and things they use it yeah. for. Industrial <laughs> things, military what? applications, it's bomb funny. sites on bombers. Back in World War II. Strong, real <laughs> so here's some mica. Look at the wall here. I'll show you a yeah. little mica. Here's a little bit. It's very shiny. There's probably like 3,000 bugs in here. Yeah. I don't know. All the little like, uh, flecks on the walls are actually out. mica. Mm -hmm. Let's try to watch out. There may be bats on the way out and try not to disturb them, okay? So well, I hope bats don't. Yeah, I didn't touch the roof. They can nest out. on my head. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have nests. What do you think about this, Wilder? Have you ever been in here? I don't want an owl to fall on my head. I don't want an owl to fall on my <laughs> head imagine if, like, imagine if there was like 200 bats in the other one. 200 bats? That would be crazy. All right, everyone out. Let's head out of this one. Okay, first one at a time. Brighton, you go first. All right, see you later, little bats. It was fun to see you. I, I really enjoyed it. Shine the flashlight down here. Okay. And I love you, little bats. I love nice, you, little bats. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Good to meet you, bats. <laughs> All right, head out, guys. A fire. A I fire. Fire. Also, it was a hole. Side hole, Justice. <laughs> How far is that hole? About uh, three or four feet. Looks like 
They were just digging out to the side to see if there's any mica out there. Oh. Oh. Good. Oh, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it warm out here or is it no, cold it's out cold. here? Cool. Cool. It's I'm gonna cold go out here. Oh. All right. That was so cool. Okay, here's the other one, and again, you'll see why we didn't find them for a couple years after we moved onto this property. Look at this. It was totally covered with leaves. Pull those leaves back before you go down so you don't bring a bunch down with you. All right, who thinks we're going to find bats in this cave? Oh, yeah. Forgot about the bats. Are you going to go in? I'm going to go in. Are you going to go in? Why don't you want to go in? What makes you not want to go in? It's smaller. This entrance is even smaller than the other one. Yeah. You going in first, Brighton? Mm -hmm. The entrance is actually right, vital. Mommy, come on! I'm going in. Okay, we take off I'm going after him. Okay. These uh, mines have never been used by coyotes as far as we can tell or any other larger animal. There's no paths that go in and out. There's no signs of that and we've never seen signs inside. But they're definitely used by a lot of smaller animals, insects. I'm so excited we found bats today. I want to research bats more. Joyful found bats. She's giving me the stink eye. I'm not gonna fit. I will fit. I promise. Yeah. I'll fit. If so mine will fit, then you can fit. Well, when they oh, when they dig dug these these whole entrances, you could probably walk in. But the organic matter and leaves and stuff has come down over the years and filled them up slowly. Are you going in? Uh, let me just look first. Well, it's tight, but you won't regret it. Unless you get bit by a snake or something. There's no snakes. I've never seen a snake in them. Not one time. I don't want to. You can. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here I go. This one's tight. I'm going to just go down there. Here we go. Please don't get stuck. <laughs> Are you in? Okay, this one, is this one bigger than the other? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm going to walk back to the back. I can almost I walk in this one. I know, I can walk. I'm coming back. I can stand in it. Just come down. Okay, Joyful's coming in. That's all I did. That, it goes way back there. That's cool. But it gets really, it gets so tight. All right, Joy, I'm shining the flashlight towards you. Okay. Uh, okay. Hey, don't walk out. Oh, don't shine the <laughs> Come out, Joy. I'm gonna show it goes back. All right, you made it in. Stand up. Stand up. You can't. You can stand up. Look out, the bugs. This ceiling is higher. Look how far it goes back. Look how far it goes back here. All the way back there. I mean, I would if there wasn't like blood. Dad, 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 no, like How far like, back does it go back there, Justice? Whoa, I, I can't even see through the back. Really? Back. Alright, I'm coming back here. Let's look in the very end. Shine it back there. Oh, wow. It goes way back there, doesn't it? Yeah. But I'm not I wonder back. how they got in here. Well, they... They know. probably use dynamite. I, don't think, I think they just use hand tools and just dug it up, buddy. Look at the crickets. There's thousands of them. This is like the most exciting thing that's happened to this all, them all winter. Also, up on the roof, if you look, look at all these roots of trees. These are little micro roots of trees. About 20 Dad, to don't, six. Don't, don't. The cave crickets won't hurt you. Oh. They're friendly, Ooh. see? Are spiders nice? Yeah. But these are roots from trees. You can see that one's alive. These little micro roots that have come down about 20 feet deep through what is, this is a type of stone. Technically this is stone. Even though it's, uh, it's crumbly. Um, it was soft enough for them to dig through with hand tools. It is stone. It's not soil. Are bugs nice, Daddy? Oh, I wouldn't say they're nice, but they, well, it's they're not mean. Well, it's kind of soil. Touch the bugs. You touch the bugs. No, you. I'm not afraid to touch. I just touched them a second ago. They won't hurt you at all. Do spiders hurt you? Touch them. 
You can stand all the way up in here. That's pretty cool, huh? Well, they won't hurt you. Touch them. Uh, well, walk that way. You can touch them right where my light is shining. Right there. Touch them where my light is shining. Do you want? Yeah. See, they won't hurt you. What are they running away for? No, uh, they're not used to be petted. Why? Do they like petting? Well, no one ever comes in here and pets them, so they're not used to it. I always pet crickets. Can you climb out? I'm the best. This Bugs I'll tell you if bugs fall you. I've got to squeeze through that little hole there. Wow. <laughs> so tight. <laughs> okay guys, up to the ridge next. Yep. And uh, walk slow enough that he can keep up with you, okay? Take yeah. your time. I'm gonna go get his backpack and mine and my rifle down here. The cool thing about these mines is that um, we found two but these entrances could so easily be covered with leaves and other debris. And you see that one right there. There are so many other spots. I'll show you two right here. There's one right there where there's a bunch of digging. And then there's one right here. You can see this one. And for all I know, and look at all the material that was, there's a lot of material that was taken out of here, obviously. For all I know, that is, that could be a 50 foot shaft. This could be the big one, the one that, you know, forgotten history. There's no one in this valley who knows this history. No one remembers this. It's not like there's someone here, even the some of the oldest families who's like, oh yeah, my granddad, he had that big mine and they know where it is. It's all forgotten and lost and covered with leaves and debris. So for all we know, this could be like a hundred foot shaft and we could come with a shovel one day and dig through these leaves and find that little entrance and be able to explore it. Oh man, here's some nice mica. And this, I want you to think about this. This is waste mica this is waste so this isn't even the good stuff this is the stuff they threw out and look at how beautiful that is it's a beautiful chunk of mixed quartz and mica it's an amazing piece of rock okay once again I gave the kids about a five minute head start I'm doing this deliberately just to let them have some independence and lead the way up the mountain you know I said this is the ultimate survival hike and I want to explain that a little bit. Okay, so here's why. When I was a kid, I used to study wilderness survival quite a bit. And whenever I would read in books, you know, the, what they always say is that the main survival skill is, is having your own, uh, maintaining your own mental state and your own mental wellness and not losing control in the woods. And I used to hate that because I really just was into the skills. I was like, I want to learn how to build a fire. I want to learn how to build a shelter. But over the years and going through some challenging times in my life, I've realized that that's the truth. That honestly, when you look at survival stories, and I've read hundreds of survival stories, that the people who survive are the ones who have the mental wherewithal. When you look at special forces, and their selection for special forces. It's not about who can shoot the best. It's not about who's the muscle man. It's about who has the mental fortitude to survive stress and not lose it. Those are the people who survive. So that's a little bit why this is the ultimate survival hike. It's not because the kids are learning all these amazing skills, so they are picking up skills along the way. It's because this is giving them this little level of stress, pushing their boundaries, letting them make decisions. Someone's screaming right now. So, you okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, yes, but wait for me. 
and uh, that, learning to overcome stress, deal with new situations, and then be comfortable in the woods, and push your comfort boundaries out, where your these basic things, getting sticks in your shirt, dealing with cold, the basic things aren't bothering you as much, um, is kind of a little bit of stress inoculation, but it's also just learning to be comfortable in the woods, pushing your boundaries, building physical strength. That's why this is the ultimate survival hike. All right, testing your observation skills. Do you see Mr. Gabe's deer stand? No, someone down there probably. Where's his deer stand? Is it down there? You gotta find it, it's close by. Can you see it? Oh yeah, you can see it, easy. This is why people use deer right stands. Deal, is right it down deal, there? Right there. Brighton found it. It's right up there. It's a high stand. It's all 25 feet up there. I sat this stand just once this last deer season. <laughs> First time I've ever sat in a tree stand. And uh, it was a beautiful experience. And deer season is closed now, so that's why we're exploring freely. During the season, we try not to disturb the deer's patterns too much and let them just relax in these woods here. So. The people are telling me they're tired, so we're gonna stop and take a break. We're gonna eat a little food. This is actually a skill. I have a sister who does, leads a lot of outdoor trips, and she tells me over and over that college students lack these basic skills in the woods. One of these basic skills is just when you're tired, you kind of do a self inventory. You say, what's going on? What can I do to make myself feel better? You might need to stop and rest, but probably more likely you need to drink some water and eat some food and just take a few minutes break and then you'll be good to go. So that's what we're gonna do. Here is a huge uh, dead black locust tree. This is one of the most rot resistant woods out here and case in point is this fence post, which the bottom rotted off, but it's still got the barbed wire staple to it. Um, it's our, on our property boundary. And that fence post is, I think 50 years old now, if I'm not mistaken, from when they put it in the ground. It did, the bottom rotted off, but the fence post is still okay. You could still, um, still solid wood 50 years later. And here's the bottom of that big, uh, locust tree. It's an amazing, incredibly hard, incredibly strong, very long lasting wood. So here's a fence post still standing after about 50 years. It's They're all going to be locusts. No one in their right mind around here would use any other type of wood unless it was pressure treated. It's not like they were hauling fence posts up here. It's more like they brought a chainsaw, cut them, put them in the ground most likely. I don't think it was probably feasible to carry them up here considering there'd be hundreds of them. There wasn't a road um, up here to my knowledge. And so they were just walking. They carried the barbed wire up, but. All right guys, you wanna hear a survival story? Yeah. There was this guy hiking uh, many years ago in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park with his Boy Scout troop. And he was probably about 12 years old. He got in an argument with someone else in the troop. They were hiking along the ridge near Mount LeConte. And um, he got in an argument, so he like fell back from the front group towards the back group. But the front group on the trail thought he was had fallen back to the back group. The back group thought he was still with the front group. But what he actually did was he thought that he heard cars on a road down the mountain towards Tennessee. So he headed off the trail. I guess he was mad at his troop. He had had like an argument with someone in the troop. And he ended up dying. Hmm? But when they searched for him, they found a trail of mittens, coats. He'd taken off almost all his clothes, taken off his shoes, ended up dying of hypothermia. 
What? Uh, of cold. He died of the cold. But what happens is people lose their minds when they're panicking and cold in the woods. The people who survive are the ones who make the good decisions because they're not totally panicked. So if he had kept on his clothes and just found a little hole under a rock to crawl in, he probably would have survived. But he just froze that night. Anyway, that story, someone told me that when I was in Boy Scouts, that stuck with me. The level of derangement that can happen. So you stay with him? Maybe. It's a very common thing for people who are lost in the woods, who die, to actually take off their warm clothing before they die. Because they get confused and panic and stuff. Alright, what did you ask me, Joyful? Through the tree, it's Probably not. And you said, how does it go through the tree? Well, they started by stapling it to the side of the tree, and then the tree just ate it over the years. <sighs> so you see this barbed wire that runs straight through the tree. So the tree was probably the size it is minus about eight inches and eight inches. So Crazy. it was a lot I smaller. It's big. Yep. You like the view? Yeah. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. Look at that. Uh, our there, house is no, you can't see it, but it's right. It is right down there. Yeah. yeah. That way, you think? Uh, uh is that it's straight down this way. Gather this dry tulip poplar bark for our fire. Okay. Collect all you can. Don't get any wet. But look at this. There's a lot in this branch right there. Oh, I'll see that. And then you can peel it off this as well. Yeah. What we want is the inner bark. But you cup you can. Yeah. Alright, here we are. We made it to the top, the high ridge behind our property. And here's the view you can see down the other side. And you can't see it well on camera, but it's an amazing view out through those trees. To the high ridges out there. Okay, climb down. You can see a lot of these fence posts are still standing, or mostly standing. Didn't expect to see anyone else up here this high today, but he was uh, a guy who hunts the neighbor's land. Oh no, find a safe spot for it. He was taking down a um, blind up here. So we talked a little bit about, he didn't shoot any deer this year. He just watches them and shoots the biggest ones. But here we are at a hunter's cabin. How old do you think this is? 50 years old. 50, it's more than that. I'd say 80, at least 80 is my guess. This is funny. This is this a blue? This is a little stove. Hopefully one day we'll haul that down the hill on a, on a four wheeler and restore it. It's a cool little stove. We'll paint it. What color do you think it would look? I think it would look good like a red and black. Like red on the top and black all around. We should paint my roof green. There's nothing wrong with this stove. This stove, we can restore this. We may need to stack new fire brick. We, there's we, we probably some of this broken. It. But it's just like a little burner. I love the little stove like this. Let's make a fire outside and cook marshmallows. That's, that sounds good. And then over here, we got another wood stove. Hey. This one is probably beyond restoration in my book. A lot, of, a lot of it's missing and broken. But this is a real wood bake stove. I, I'd love to have one like that in a house. I gotta look. What is it? Um, it's a kitchen. It looks like the squirrels used it too. Well, I tell you, what do you think the squirrels and the skunks and raccoons have been doing with this? Look at this plywood. What did they do to it? She was gnawing on it. They ate it. They gnawed it and ate it. Why do you think they do that? Mm, why did they eat it? 
I think they like the glue in it, and there's probably was leftover food residue, and they just gnawed it all away. Yo, you see this pattern? Funny. My guess is this was some sort of old oil spill, and they just ate all that out. That's, that's funny. The good tasting parts of the plywood rats, mice. Yo, that's funny. Skunk, squirrels. Something's been snacking in here in the kitchen. <laughs> probably raccoon or something. I've heard of eating off the counter, but never eating the counter. Eating the countertop. Yeah, I've, I've heard of doing this, but I've never heard of doing this. So groups of guys, apparently they were hunting foxes with dogs years ago. They would come up here and stay for weekends, and they would hunt foxes, and they built this little cabin. Uh, it's Love definitely it. run down. They would sleep up here, it. stay up here, Love cook their meals up here. What's now here's the big, here's a question for you. This is weird. Are you ready? What is that little chair doing up here? What? That what one right you? there. That one? Yeah. What is that chair doing here? Is it um, um, an old, uh, what is it called? It's, it's a tiny kid's chair. Maybe they brought a kid with them. Maybe they brought a kid with them. Who knows? It's, to me, it's a little weird. But... The, it kind of looks like it got struck by lightning or something. Could be. I guess someone brought their kid. I think probably so. They just probably hung out in here and everyone went hunting. Yeah. My thought with this thing has been one day we'll take it out and, um, I'll come up here and knock it down and stack all the wood and put a, some metal roofing on it so it doesn't fall down. And then eventually use it and build something up here, you know, down the road. Build a little tree house or a tiny, tiny cabin. Like a rustic little cabin. But I, then this could be siding. We already have it. It's all up here already. Okay, guys, if we're going to build a fire, first step is to clear the ground. So I want you to clear this area right here really good. Clear this whole area of leaves. I want it cleared way out, like all the way out to here. So clear this whole circle so we don't light those leaves on fire. All right, it's time to gather firewood. Find the dry stuff, guys. Yeah, when did you first bark? It's tulip poplar bark. Oh. Oh, yeah, look at this white wood I found. It's so cute. Oh, that is beautiful. Cool. Good job building the fire, guys. I actually went off trying to get a shoot a squirrel to cook over the fire. Didn't see any, and the kids built the fire while I was gone. So I got back and they had the fire built. Not as good. Just oh. So tulip poplar bark. There's a lot of inner barks around the world that uh, work really well for several things. One of them is making. Well, when it comes down to it, it's just it's um, isolating really fine, long, strong fibers. And so that's good for a few things. The fine fibers are good for building fires. And so this inner tulip poplar bark is um, great for building fires. And you can, you can easily, easily, easily make cord or string out of it. What you do is you, if you want to make a bunch of it, you would cut the trees down, peel the bark off, and soak it in water. But what you can find, like in a survival situation, is bits of half rotted bark, where you can easily just peel and separate the inner. And then what you can do, whether you want to, if you want to make a fire and cord, you do it a little differently. If you're going to make cord, what you want to do is separate the fibers really finely, but lay them in a linear fashion. If you're making uh, some tinder for a fire, it doesn't matter, but you just work it and work it and work it and work it. And I won't spend but a few minutes on this just right here in front of you. And you'll see really quickly that what you can come up with is a beautiful, beautiful fine nest and if you if you're not experienced starting fires you'll find <laughs> it can be hard to take a match and start a fire in the woods but if you do the work and process something like this it makes that first light so much easier even if you're using matches or a lighter um, so there is some process partially processed tulip poplar bark and you can process that into a beautiful uh, string as well takes a lot of time. There's other inner barks. I think cedar bark. There's uh, several that are around the country, but tulip poplar is so abundant here. I would never even try to use something else. I'll introduce you to a tulip poplar tree. Hi. Uh, hey, this is my friend of the tulip poplar tree. This is my friend, uh, YouTube viewer. Tulip poplar is an amazing tree and it grows incredibly tall and straight. I'll show you even a better example. Look how straight this tree is right here perfectly straight and there's no branches for over probably 60 feet. It's a beautiful, beautiful forest tree. What did you bring to eat? Tuna. And uh, where's the can opener? I had forgot it. Have you opened Ever opened a can without a can? Yeah. What you do? Yeah, a knife. 
Yes, you have, but not that kind. Yeah. It was a different kind. Let's do it. Let's open it. It's, kind of, it's not easy to do. But... I guess if I'm not skinning a squirrel with this knife, we can use it. I can dull it and I can sharpen it again later. Just make sure you don't cut your edges on the your fingers on the edges. Oh, this is coming out. <laughs> we could save the knife. We probably we don't even have to open it more if we're careful with this lid. Now we can pry open. Yummy. We're gonna carve a fork for our tuna out of birch. Nice food safe wood. Well, basically all the wood out here is food safe, but... Mm -hmm. I'm gonna dead pig up here. What? Here's a trick to split a stick with a um, knife and not cut yourself what I'm talking about is if you take if I want to split this and just push down here you'll pop through it and cut into your hand like that so if you take the blade and lay it in your hand flat and then you take the part you want to split and push it straight onto the blade and then jab it jab that into your hand where that wood will hit your hand you can not only split it precisely but you can avoid hurting yourself as well so there's a little trick for you I just broke my fork. Oh. Chopsticks it is. You want to eat some tuna? Eat some tuna. Yeah. Alright, you want to eat some tuna? Thank you, yummy, yummy. I'm going to have a little bit. It's always interesting to me how much... Quick, eat it off the ground! <laughs> how much better food tastes in the woods. <laughs> Okay, we've been on the mountain probably five hours total and the sun's about to set. We need to head down the hill pretty soon so we don't run out of light. And we gotta put the fire out. So the first step in putting out a fire safely is to let it burn down. The more it burns down, the less coals and stuff you have to deal with. All right, water next. Three, two, one, start. Hey, Brian, let's pass. Did y'all hear the owl? Yeah. I was wondering what that was. Listen, it's up on the mountain. Listen, guys. I want to hear it again. It's up on the hill, mountain here. The little owl on the mountain. Once again, I don't know if this can come across on the camera. It's really beautiful though. I can see it so clearly with my eyes. But I'm going to show you this high ridge. Um, this is a ridge out at about 5,000 feet. And if you look right through here, you can see this high ridge is covered with frost and ice. The whole ridge up there. Okay, the last step with just getting the fire out is just uh, smashing it and stirring it to make sure you got all those hot coals with water. And you can make a little bit of water go a long way if you work that fire in this one area. All right, we're headed down the mountain. Hey, did you have a good time? Yeah. You had fun? What was your favorite thing about it? Eating marshmallows. Eating marshmallows? Okay. 
Justice, Joy have gone ahead. I'm making slow progress with the boys on this extremely steep part here. We came down a different way. Yeah, as soon as we get off the steep part, I'll, I'll give you a piggyback ride. I just want to show you this. This is a beautiful sunset lit tulip poplar grove. It's mostly tulip poplar, all the, all the tall straight ones out there. And you see this a lot kind of in the bottoms where there would be a little creek or little springs and stuff. And uh, especially on the south side of ridges. And I think they're, it's, they're lovely. There's plenty of trees in there that have trunks I can't reach around. You can bring them down. Let me carry them so you don't poke yourself. So. No, they're, for, they're too cold. They're too big. The deal can't be. Well, deer season is over, so we need to take them out of the woods. Yeah. So they don't get stolen by a a uh, Beal. a skunk or a, something that wants to chew on them. Something that eats them. Okay. Something I don't, to, I don't know what to steal it. What would steal it? A beal. A baby. Wow. Yeah, I'll give you a piggyback ride. What now? Sure. Be dry. Why? Because there are bears up here. You think there's bears up here? Yeah, there is bears up here. Well, so it's gonna be I've only seen one bear on a game camera, and I've never seen much sign of any other bears. You see that little pool of water down there? What is it? That's the highest open water in the mountain right now. Yep. Are you tracking Justice? You can see his footsteps on his screen. Alright, Brighton has been tracking his brother Justice down the mountain. And very effectively, you can see where he ran. Show us what he did. His track ran down to that spot right there, and then he had to jump across this ravine here. This little ravine. <laughs> we should ask him about that when we get down. Yeah. All right, here we are, coming out of the woods, back to civilization. It is beautiful, look at that. See the moon? Yeah. It's pretty, huh? Okay guys, thanks for joining us for this survival hike with kids. Basically, we just spent a lot of time in the woods. We explored, we pushed our physical limits and boundaries. Moo, we'll throw the cows a bale of hay and we're done for the day. We'll see you in a video soon, so goodbye.